Grace Luanga channel for free meteorology and uh, navigation instruments lessons. Welcome, my esteemed viewers. Welcome to lesson three of airplane navigation instruments, a program run by Grace Luanga YouTube channel. Grace Luanga, for those watching for the first time, my name is Grace Luanga and my profile has already been given in lesson one presentation. As a reminder, in lesson two, we were looking at earth rate, a subtopic of instruments topic. Ultimeters and design. I am delighted, therefore, to discuss with you today another topic from the same subtopic. Our topic today is called Ultimeters and Design. By design, I don't mean a fashion design but I refer to the mechanism used in the three different altimeters. We will also look at the simple altimeter, the sensitive altimeter and the servo-assisted altimeter. In its simplest form, static pressure is fed into a sealed instrument case from the static source. Inside the instrument case is a partially evacuated capsule or aneroid capsule. Expansion and contraction of the capsule is kept under control by a leaf spring and the controlled movement is transmitted via a system of linkages to the pointer on the instrument dial. As altitude increases, the static pressure inside the instrument case decreases. The capsule expands which causes the pointer to rotate and indicate an increase in altitude. In the descent, the capsule is compressed and the pointer moves in the opposite direction. Introduction Altimeters and design is one of the most interesting sub-items in pressure altimeter item because it makes you classify all altimeters according to the terms in the potential energy differential equation. And of course, if you know differential equations, you can also compute total potential energy. Therefore, I believe that this lesson three will be beneficial to all of us. Objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson three, the viewer will be clear in the following points. Simple altimeter, pressure altimeter, sensitive altimeter, barometric error, temperature error, position error, Server assisted altimeter, leg error, pioneers of altimeters and design science. Simple altimeter. Simple altimeter is defined by dz is equal to 
minus 30 dp. In meteorology, the equation is known as the homogeneous hydrostatic approximation. It states that for every 30 feet flown upward, the air pressure drops by 1 millibar, as will be shown by the next video clip. The sea level pressure of the atmosphere is taken to be 1,013.2 millibars. The 900 millibar level is at 3,200 feet, and the 800 millibar level at 6,400 feet. To each pressure is assigned a definite height. This assumed constant atmosphere is representative of the average atmospheric conditions found in many parts of the world. It is known as the Akeo Standard Atmosphere. Sensitive Ultimeters Sensitive Ultimeters drop out only the term partial Z, partial T and the pressure error signals are detected by means of two analog capsules. Therefore, sensitive altimeters are designed to operate at higher flight levels than simple altimeters as shown by the next video clip. The sensitive altimeter uses essentially the same principle of operation as the simple altimeter, but incorporates some additional refinements. The single aneroid capsule of the simple altimeter is replaced with a bank of two or sometimes three aneroid capsules. We can see two capsules represented diagrammatically here. The combination of capsules gives increased movement for changes in pressure and this makes the instrument more sensitive to small changes in altitude. Servo assisted altimeter Servo assisted altimeters do not drop out any energy term. Small terms like uh, partial Z, partial T can be detected by means of an electronic circuit. Therefore, servo assisted altimeters are designed to operate at a higher flight levels than sensitive altimeters, as shown by the next video clip. A further refinement of the pressure altimeter is the servo assisted altimeter which gives improved accuracy, particularly at high altitudes, where the change in air pressure is much smaller than at low altitudes for a given change in height. The principle of the servo-assisted altimeter is that direct mechanical linkage between the aneroid capsules and the pointer is replaced with an electromagnetic system. Minute movements of the capsules can be sensed by this system and the movements converted into electrical current by an electromagnetic pickoff. The electric current generated is amplified and used to drive a servo motor which rotates the pointer. We can see here in diagrammatic form how this is achieved. Applications of the simple ultimate errors the term bracket minus 30 dp bracket is called pressure error and it is also recognized as the biggest energy term in the differential equation. Simple ultimeters therefore drop out all the weak terms of the energy equation. 
Pressure error signals are detected by means of only one annular capsule. In practice, the weak terms are not absolutely weak, but relatively weak. The instrument maximum performance level is only 20,000 feet above ground, as shown by the next two video clips. Firstly, that mean sea level pressure is 1013.25 millibars or hectopascals and the temperature is plus 15 degrees Celsius while the air density is 1225 grams per cubic meter secondly that from mean sea level up to 36,090 feet or 11 kilometers temperature is assumed to reduce by 1.98 degrees Celsius per thousand feet or 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer. The international standard atmosphere looks something like this. On the x-axis we have the ratio of value at altitude to value at sea level and on the y-axis we have altitude. As you can see temperature varies linearly up to the tropopause at about 36,000 feet then remains constant until well above the cruise altitude of most aircraft then increases and decreases again as you reach space. Density and pressure vary exponentially with altitude. As you can see, there's a huge difference between the density and pressure at sea level and the density and pressure at cruise altitude for jet aircraft. Barometric error. In meteorology, the barometric error is known as the cross isobaric flow. The application implies that when a pilot overflies a region of low pressure, the altimeter overreads and vice versa, as shown by the next video clip. This next example, when the aircraft is flying from high pressure to low pressure, without adjusting the altimeter setting, where does the altimeter think it is if you're traveling from high pressure to lower pressure. Right, since lower pressure air is higher, the altimeter thinks that it's climbing. And if the pilot did nothing, the altimeter would display a higher altitude. We'll just say, again, 7,200 feet. Slowly, the pilot will descend to maintain the same indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. Without changing the altimeter setting to adjust for this difference in air pressure, the pilot would gradually descend to maintain an indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. This would mean the pilot is now flying 200 feet lower than desired. The aircraft's true altitude, the altitude above mean sea level, will be lower than indicated. Hence the term, again, high to low, look out below. Now, imagine the aircraft is flying from low pressure to a higher pressure. Without adjusting the altimeter setting, where does the altimeter think it is if you're traveling from low pressure to higher pressure. Right, since higher pressure is lower, the altimeter thinks that it's descending, and if the pilot did nothing, the altimeter would display a lower altitude, we'll just say 6,800 feet. Slowly though, the pilot will climb to maintain the same indicated altitude in the cockpit of 7,000 feet. Without changing the altimeter setting to adjust for this difference in air pressure, the pilot would gradually climb to maintain an indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. This would mean the pilot is now flying 200 feet higher than desired. The aircraft's true altitude, the altitude above mean sea level, will be higher than indicated. Temperature error. In meteorology, the temperature error states that when a warm air mass moves into a cold region, it ascends. In air navigation, the application implies that when a pilot flies from a warm to adjusted cold place, the altimeter overreads and vice versa, as shown by the next video clip. Let's start when the aircraft is flying from warm air to cold air. 
Without adjusting the altimeter setting, where does the altimeter think it is if you're traveling from warm air to cold air? Since cold air is higher, the altimeter thinks it's climbing, and if the pilot did nothing, the altimeter will display a higher altitude. We will just say 7,200 feet. Without changing the altimeter setting to adjust for this difference in air temperature, the pilot would gradually descend to maintain an indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. This would mean the pilot is now flying 200 feet lower than desired. The aircraft's true altitude, the altitude above mean sea level, will be lower than indicated, hence the term high to low, look out below. In this next example, when the aircraft is flying from cold air to warm air, without adjusting the altimeter setting, where does the altimeter think it is if you're traveling from cold air to warm air? Since warmer air is lower, the altimeter thinks that it's descending. And if the pilot did nothing, the altimeter will display a lower altitude. We'll just say 6,800 feet. Slowly, the pilot will climb to maintain the same indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. Without changing the altimeter setting to adjust for this difference in the air temperature, the pilot would gradually climb to maintain an indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. This would mean that the pilot is now flying 200 feet above the intended altitude. The aircraft's true altitude, the altitude above mean sea level, will be higher than indicated. Position error. The position error application implies that uh, when a pilot flies over a high mountain, the altimeter overreads. In meteorology, the equation states that when an air mass crosses a mountain barrier, it rises and becomes unstable, as shown by the next video clip. Starting to fly inland though, and as that elevation starts to creep up on us, the altimeter doesn't change its indication of altitude. Here over Kansas City at an elevation of a thousand feet, you're getting closer to the ground, but the altimeter doesn't change. And you see where that can actually start to become a problem as you get into mountainous areas out here in the Rockies where the altimeter is still reading that 7,000 feet, but you're getting closer and closer to terrain. So what the pilot may do by accident is rather than noticing that and resetting the altimeter like you should, the pilot will try to maintain that desired altitude, that original 7,000 feet altitude, so we'll end up descending. So it's not that the aircraft has climbed, but the pilot thinks they've gone from 7,000 feet to 8,000 feet, so the pilot is gonna to try to adjust by returning, quote unquote, to 7,000 feet. Well, that's gonna cause the aircraft to be lower than the pilot actually thinks it is. So the applications of the servo assisted altimeter errors. Significant en route features are known to be the instantaneous time T. The servo assisted altimeter error associated with T is called the lag error. In meteorological analogy, the lag error is the pressure tendency. The lag error application implies that when pressure tendencies fall, the self-assisted altimeter overreads and vice versa. In the tropics, the average pressure tendency is about plus or minus 2 millibar in 24 hours, whereas in the mid-latitudes it is about plus or minus 3 millibar in one hour, as shown by the next video clip. Within United Kingdom airspace, these are known as altimeter setting regions. These regions may be large areas, or apply only to the airfield for which the QNH was given. An airfield QNH will cause the altimeter to show airfield altitude, that is, the altitude of the center point of the main runway above sea level on landing, 
irrespective of the temperature. In the United Kingdom the lowest forecast value of QNH for an altimeter setting region is called the regional pressure setting, and may be used to ensure safe terrain separation when cruising at lower altitudes. In some parts of the world a similar procedure is adopted and this is known as regional QNH however this name has been modified to the above in the UK to avoid ambiguity. Paul Kurzman Paul Kurzman invented the sensitive altimeter in 1930. In 1928, Paul Kurzman forever changed the way pilots would fly by introducing the first accurate barometric altimeter an instrument used to measure the altitude by calculating barometric pressure flying on the gauges became possible as shown by the next video and image is the altimeter the altimeter is located just to the right of the attitude indicator and it looks uh, essentially like a clock uh, it actually has three hands and the hands represent uh, the uh, the altitude in hundreds and in thousands, and then the real small one that's a little bit hard to see is actually the 10,000 foot mark. Uh, the little window that's over here on the side is actually called a callsman. I, I gather that was from the person that actually invented it. Lucien Vidier Lucien Vidier invented the aneroid barometer in 1843. The French inventor Lucien Vidier developed the first practical aneroid barometer in 1843. Aneroid barometers are the most common barometers in use today. Aneroid barometers are the predecessors of airplane ultimators as shown by the next image. Time Viewers, because of time, the general ultimators and the design theory cannot be covered here, but it is available in a book. Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Chris Luanga. Many thanks to all of you who have shared your video and sound clips with me in order to make the lesson a success. Meanwhile, if you have any message, you can send me an email or SMS. I am always available 24-7. Subscribe and benefit more from our channel. As I look forward to meeting you, I beg you to stop here. Thank you very much for watching me. And God bless you. Hi, I'm Steve Jones. I'm going to explain how barometric pressure is measured. Now, there are two basic devices. The first is a mercury barometer, and the second is an aneroid barometer. This is the cheaper device and safer device, and the one that is used in those type of barometers you hang on the wall, which have a needle.